Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We are executive directors of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly talk show about atheism, free thought, and the need to keep religion and government separate. FFRF is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists and agnostics, working as a state church watchdog. Please join us today or ask for information. We'll send you a complimentary issue of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Do that at FFRF.org. And we'll be talking about why atheism matters and why religion holds women back with Susan Jacoby, the distinguished journalist, author, and FFRF honorary director. She's been interviewed about secularism and free thinking by Bill Moyers. Susan Jacoby is a scholar specializing in the history of reason, atheism, secularism, and religious liberty. And she's written a lot of books. Susan Jacoby has about a dozen books, which include Free Thinkers, A History of American Secularism, The Age of American Unreason, Strange Gods, A Secular History of Conversion, The Great Agnostic, Robert Ingersoll and American Free Thought, Half Jew, A Daughter's Search for Her Family's Buried Past, Never Say Die, The Myth and Marketing of the New Old Age. Susan Jacoby's articles and essays appear regularly in The New York Times, The Washington Post, and The Daily Beast. She was named FFRF's Free Thought Heroine in 2004. She's currently working on two new books. One is called Why Atheism Matters, and one is called Up From Sanctity, Why Religion Holds Women Back. So good to talk with you, Susan. Welcome to Free Thought Matters. Glad to be back on your show again. So I'm thrilled that you're working on this new book. I love the title, Up From Sanctity, Why Re Religion Holds Women Back. And that's what we want to talk about in this first segment, about why you're not religious and why religion is holding women back. And first, a little bit about your own story, Susan. Well, my story is, 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 is not unusual. That's why I've always been interested in conversions. I was raised a Catholic. I come from a family uh, which includes uh, uh, my father's side of the family were German Jews who contributed to who converted to everybody's religion that, that they married, basically. I wouldn't call them a religious family in any way. Uh, my mother's family were Catholics, but uh, it turns out my, my grandmother found, found out in her last years that, that she, whose mother emigrated from Germany at the age of 15, was actually Jewish, too. Hmm. She found this out because she learned that her mother's his older siblings on the other side of the Atlantic were named Abraham and Sarah, and their letters stopped arriving uh, to her mother uh, from Germany in 1939. So that's actually, that's pretty good circumstantial evidence. So, uh, Susan, I, I, were you a believer as a, as a child, or did you have a tough conversion to atheism? No, I have to say that probably, I mean, and this is almost a cliche, probably being educated in first through eighth grade in the Catholic schools of the 1950s and early 60s, probably, I, I will say, but from the time I was old enough to think about it, uh, I, just, I just didn't buy it. You know, the whole, the whole, the whole stories about the virgin birth and, and all of that, and also, I had parents, particularly my mother from the Catholic side of the family, uh, who gave me mixed messages. You know, I'd say, you know, I, I, I just don't really, really see how someone can rise from the dead. And she said, well, you know, just because, just because the nuns believe that, it doesn't mean you have to believe it, which is really, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a subversive uh, message. It would be, you know, I have to say, uh, as an atheist, and as someone and more who who has a lot of religious friends, liberal religious friends, 
I am, one of the things that really concerns me is that certainly I think that today's young people, they don't usually call themselves atheists. You know, they, they call themselves, uh, they, they, you know, they say they're, they're, they say they're more secular, that they don't belong to any church. But it's hard to really know things about religion if you have no religious education. Uh, in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. I think everybody ought to be made to read the King James Bible, frankly. I agree with my uh, late friend Christopher Hitchens about that. That it would um, turn you into I an think, atheist, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but when you, when you read the Bible and are instructed in things which even to a lot of children seem irrational, uh, it certainly makes you think about religion more. You look at it more critically. And I think not getting any education at all in any, in any religion, for example, I was astonished that nobody, hardly anyone on television, when they, uh, when they brought that statue of that, that gold gilt statue of Donald Trump to the CPAC convention, didn't mention the story of the golden calf. Very few TV commentators did. And well, if you know how the story of the golden calf turned out, <laughs> it, does, uh, it, does, it does tend to you know, make, make you skeptical about the whole idea of mixing religion and government. Of course, talk, talking about uh, the Ten Commandments and Moses coming back from the mountain and finding people worshiping the wrong God, and then they uh -huh. get smited, yes. Yeah. That was funny. Now, uh, Susan. Very, very well for those people. <laughs> they, they smote each other quite, quite vigorously, the tribe of Levi and the rest. Uh, huh. but, if, but if you haven't read the Bible, you don't know a lot about Western literature. I, just as if you haven't read the Koran, I have to say I've only read about half of it. So, Susan, uh, what we know the Bible says about women is pretty bleak, pretty—you uh, can't get too much more suppressive. You have a strongly worded subtitle for your upcoming book, Why Religion Holds Women Back. Uh, can you briefly summarize the thesis of that? Yes. Well, I think, you know, my liberal religious female friends would disagree with me. They, they would and do and have. We often have discussions about this said to me that, that you, if you change it and remake it from the kind of patriarchal religion that you see in the Quran, in the Hebrew Bible, and in the Christian Bible, let's just take the, the three uh, West theologies, let's say, that all have a book. Uh, uh, if you take the patriarchal stuff out of it, then religion can be as good for women as it is for anybody else. They have a point. But not really, because if you take all the patriarchal stuff out of religion, it's not religion as we have known it. Uh, I mean, certainly Thomas Jefferson's you know, famous book in which he takes all of the supernatural stuff out of what we call the New Testament, uh, what, what Christians call the New Testament. You take all of the supernatural stuff out of a book, and what have you got? Uh, there's a lot of what people love to argue about, you know, whether the founders were deists or religious or, or atheists. Well, atheism wasn't the, something that very many people called themselves in the 18th century. But I think it, the Jefferson book is a good example. If you take the supernatural stuff out of theological religion, then, then, uh, then what have you got? There is a... Uh, I've, I've forgotten his name. Uh, you would know it. He's he's written a, a new uh, an, an essay in the Atlantic and a, and a book about the resurrection and Easter that's coming out uh, that's coming out for Easter. And and one of the things he talks about is that without uh, he quotes from John Updike in fact, you know, saying that without Christ rising from the dead, that is a stone that is rolled away, and that stone has to be rolled away for for you to understand the true meaning of Christianity. That's right. The stone does have to be rolled away. So, Updike was right. So and Susan, you have to, have to believe in that to believe in religion. That's so Susan, no matter how you interpret the Hebrew scriptures or the New Testament scriptures, they're still pretty awful 
to women, which is the point of your book. Why, why is religion holding women back? Well, religion holds women back because it's one more obstacle you have to fight. And that, of course, is also true of Islam. It is even more true of Islam because Islam hasn't been affected by the Enlightenment in general, particularly in the countries, you know, which are Muslim-dominated. I, I know a lot of liberal Muslims, too, uh, and they say, too, you know, just take the patriarchal stuff out. And Well, how do you do that? How do you do that? I mean, one of the things uh, uh, I think a lot about the, the decisions that are going to be made fairly soon about whether we're going to pull out of Afghanistan, which... Uh, as a, as a person and a political person, I would normally be in favor of. But one thing I absolutely know is that the position of women in Afghanistan is going to be destroyed by the withdrawal of Western troops. The Taliban is going to start killing women who want to be educated again. It has been, it, it has been a centuries-long battle in, in every country dominated particularly by one religion which is why I think there's so many issues that, uh, you know, all of the things that Betsy DeVos was trying to do to get more money for religious schools. The Secretary of Education came up to New York early in, early in uh, uh, former President Trump's term, and uh, she didn't visit any public schools. She only visited Catholic schools. Well, fine, uh, but but... It's these things need to be corrected. This overcorrection for right-wing religion uh, that has taken place during the last some years so, has Susan, to be, and it's not getting quite as much attention as it should. I'm interested in this uh, friend of yours who said, "Well, if we took everything about patriarchy out of the Bible, then women would be treated the same." But in fact. It underpins the whole story of Christianity that a woman brought sin and death into the world, and that is Eve. <laughs> and then that's why well, we needed to be really saved by Jesus. Bible. So, so yeah. You know, so this is a very really patriarch. It's a patriarchal religion predicated on women's subservience, and that's really, I think, why why Christianity holds women back uh, and Orthodox Judaism. And uh, just briefly. Uh, what, else, what, what else is the problem with religion and women? Anytime you have to fight to get what other groups, that's like asking why racism holds black people back. It's <laughs> really analogous. Because anytime you have to fight to get what other groups of people can get automatically, uh, it it, what doesn't kill you kills you makes you stronger. I don't believe that. I think that uh, I think that being encouraged and being treated equally makes you stronger. You know, which is why which is why it's it's it which is why the vote was kept away from women for such a long time. And the fact that the vote was kept away from women was purely religious. As so many uh, other things are, you know, the fight against reproductive rights, abortion rights, women's right to control our own body. You know, the only organized opposition is religious. And also the whole fight over what professions women can practice and what they may not practice. Uh, you know, one reason uh, I was thrilled when I heard, for example, that some of the lead research scientists for, the, for two of the various vaccines were women. That, uh, that is just, you know, to me, that's just wonderful. Susan, we have to take a break. And we're talking with Susan Jacoby, the author, the commentator, about her many books. And after the break, I want to ask you, Susan, about your next book that you're working on, Why Atheism Matters. I'm Dan Barker with Annie Laurie Gaylor. We'll be back with more Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. 
That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason. My name is Jarvis, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. There are many reasons why I'm an atheist, but I'll start with the crudest explanation. I'm sure many of you have seen Clash of the Titans or The Immortals or 300, these blockbuster films about ancient Greek or Roman religion, which we now call mythology. But back then it wasn't mythology. It was very real for them. They genuinely believed that you had to put a coin in a person's mouth before they were buried so that they could pay for the literal ferry to the afterlife. Just as many people today believe that they should eat crackers and wine on a Sunday or that God wants women to hide their bodies under black burqas. Every religion that has ever existed, and there are many, have all believed that they were right, that their rituals and rules and beliefs were 100% correct. And they all thought they nailed it. But where are they today? Uh, if they're not completely forgotten, they're on the silver screen, amusing us with their sword fights, animal sacrifices, and oracles. The religions of today are the entertainment of tomorrow. Everyone, I hope, is an atheist about Zeus and Apollo, Juno and Poseidon. I just added Jesus and Muhammad to that list. My name is Bill, and I'm an out-of-the-closet apatheist, meaning I don't really care what you believe, and I don't really think that you should care what I believe. I was raised in South Dakota in a strict Catholic family. I was an altar boy. I served Mass a lot of Sundays twice. We, the, the priest gave us this little card that said, in case of accident, please call a priest. I don't really like that idea anymore since I left the church about 40 years ago. Now, if you find me alongside the road after an accident, please call an ambulance and an EMT. We're talking with Susan Jacoby, author and journalist. Uh, her newest book that she's working on is called Why Atheism Matters. And Susan, that's a wonderful title. A great title. Why does Part atheism why, matter? One of the reasons atheism matters so much now, and and I don't mean just atheism, I'm not believing in God. I mean keeping whatever one's beliefs are about this separate from the way the country is run. I mean, for example, uh, people will say, well, how can you stand Joe Biden? He's a devout Catholic. Well, probably if Joe Biden and I were to sit down and have a theology discussion, we wouldn't agree. But he is the kind of post-Vatican II Catholic who, while he believes in certain things, no doubt that I don't believe in them, he does not write them into public policy. In other words, you can be a Catholic, as numerous Pew polls show that the majority of lay Catholics in the United States and Europe support women's reproductive rights. Uh, and and what we need to do is get back to it's not just why atheism matters, but it's why not imposing your religion. And one of the tenets of atheism is separation of church and state, and not only atheism. It's so uh, we know. I mean, the Baptists got their start by wanting to separate church and state. Not a lot of the right wing Southern Baptists today. But the Jimmy Carter type Baptists got their, you know, got their start. Roger Williams, they got their start. If you don't believe in separation of church and state, that's just one of the most important values that non-religious people have. And I think it matters right now for a reason I alluded to in talking about women. But there are an awful lot of people. Look, you know, people like Robert Ingersoll. They knew more about the Bible than, than nearly all of the divines of their day. Uh, in other words, if you have a population in which people know very little about religion itself, they don't fully understand the whole story of how awful the union of church and state has been for human freedom. A lot of people think atheism is a negative thing. You're against God, you're against religion, you're a dissenter, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But a lot of people think atheists live meaningless and sad and angry and 
immoral lives, why would anyone want to become an atheist? Do you address that in your book? I will. I, I, I will be addressing that in my book. Uh, well, it's completely wrong because it assumes that life itself has no meaning without belief in the supernatural. Uh, what, what we, secularists or free thinkers, atheists, whatever you want to call us, we assume that the life that matters is the life that's here, that we have now. We, we assume, we assume that, that uh, why, why wouldn't it be wonderful to be an atheist? For all I know, all the scientists who worked on the vaccines are not atheists. You know, I don't know whether they are. But this is a great human achievement, like so many others. And I, I am much prouder and happier to think that it's a human achievement than, than that God came down and, and, and rolled away a stone and, and put it in their heads to, uh, to, to figure out our, our messenger DNA. Uh, I'm proud that human beings can do that. It is a reason to respect human beings, all human beings. And it's why, by the way, places where church and state are together and where, where just to say you're an atheist can get you put in jail, which it can, which it can and will yes. when America leaves Afghanistan. By the way, I don't know if you know, uh, I lived in, in an officially, officially atheist old Soviet Union for two and a half years uh, when I was, I wrote for the Washington Post. My husband was the Post Bureau Chief. I wrote my first book in Russia. And the one thing that happened later on, and then I went back later during the Gorbachev era when I could get back in again, they wouldn't let me back in. The only people who were sorry to see the Soviets go in Afghanistan were women. Uh, because the Soviet occupation, terrible as it was for Afghans, had really improved the status of women. Like having American soldiers there, it enabled women to start to get an education. Mm -hmm. The Taliban is going to start killing, killing women. That's yeah. why atheism matters. Is, is, uh, is if, uh, it's one of the reasons that the right-wing religious people are so opposed to education. Because when you have an education, you realize why you don't have to believe that the Red Sea was parted or, or, that, or that Jesus rose from the dead uh, to, to find life meaningful. Susan, you have uh, said to me uh, off camera that you're concerned that this vital constitutional principle of separation between religion and government is going to take a back seat right now because of the pandemic, um, you know, it, it, it is never the first priority of our public officials. We've seen a lot of damage in the Trump era. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, yes, uh, COVID and, and getting, getting some people back to work and ending this epidemic would have to be the first priority right now of any administration. But I also think that because these, the, these other problems are so urgent and they are secular problems, uh, unless you believe that uh, God, has to, God has to have his reasons for killing uh, you know, this many Americans uh, in the course of one year. Uh, I think that, that a lot of the stuff that needs to be cleaned up about the erosion of separation of church and state uh, in the in during during the Trump years in particular, I, d I don't think he was religious personally at all. It was what appealed to his right wing religious base, not his left left wing religious base. We have, and it's not also that a religious person who understands the, the, the separation of church and state and accepts it is not a threat. The kind of right wing religious people, for example who don't see anything wrong with separating children from their parents at the border, uh, sometimes forever. Uh, those are the people who, you know, who don't understand anything. And in a country with separation of church and state, it's, it's very desirable. And this is why, one of the reasons why atheism matters, that secular values that anyone can be can accept 
but that it is wrong to separate children from their families. That they be presented as secular values, not religious values or necessarily secular values, but values that can be incorporated into our government without their being promoted as uh, being Christian values or Jewish values or any other kind of values. So during this pandemic, millions of people have been praying while millions of people are dying, and, and prayer does not seem to be working. But it wasn't prayer that created the vaccine, was it? It was human values. It was, it was science that is solving our problems. Well, well, religious people would tell you that, that, that prayer did create the vaccine because without God having given this idea to human, the, the, way, the, way, the, way, the way people were truly religious, uh, 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 the head of the uh, of NIH, Powell, uh, is religious, uh, not right-wing religious, but he is devoutly religious. And uh, he, again, is not the kind of person who wants to impose his values on other people. And that itself is why atheism matters. It's a counter thing in the mix that needs to be there for us to have separation of church and state. Here, here, and we are facing so many dangers, especially with the Supreme Court and the judiciary that Trump has given us. And we'll be um, delighted to look forward to your new books, Why Atheism Matters, and Up From Sanctity, Why Religion Holds Women Back. Thank you so much, Susan Jacoby, for joining us today. Thank you, and everybody out there in the Midwest. And thank you for, for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace. Let's restore respect for America's secular roots. Help the Freedom From Religion Foundation defend the wall of separation between state and church. Join us at FFRF.org. Freedom depends on freethinkers.